Yes. Uh, once again, welcome to the Latex workshop. Today is day two. So um, kindly use your full name as your Zoom name so that we can have the necessary um, attendance record. Um, Tumila, do you have any announcements? Mm, I'm not sure. I don't think so. All right. Th th thank you so much. So um, once again, for, for this LaTeX class, you can go to the, the link to access the, the files for for today. So, so the, 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 the slide, this slide is already there, as well as the, the files for, for last week. You can find them at, at this link, bit.ly slash nshk underscore latex underscore workshop. So last week, we gave ourselves like a, an assignment to test our skills on what we've learned so far. So um, the, the first thing that would want to hear from you, it would be like a feedback from last class and then um, if you have any issues with the assignments. So I think uh, we have some people here with us. So can you just tell us about your attempts to the assignment? Um, can I start? Uh, yes, of course. Okay, okay, I think I shared my document on the, the um, what do you call it? Google Drive. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have. I had some issues. Um, I was. I wish you could open it. Um. Okay, so I'm doing that. Yeah. Yes. So, so, what issues do you have? Um, so the captioning of my images, first of all, the captioning of my images are different. The first one, the first image, I use the actual captioning um, style you taught us. Okay. Yes. Um, but I realized the figure itself was not bold, even if I put the bold um, function command. But for, yes. the other, for the other images, I just named it and centered it without using the caption, because when I captioned it, the image went to a different section on its own. Yes. It's okay. So it, 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 is, is that the only issue you-, you Then you the complain? second issue, my attempt to cite the figures failed so many times. So if you look at my um, text, you'd realize that all the places for the figures are still in question marks. Okay. And it, then um, the final one, there's some um, text that went over the alignment, even if I tried to align it, but it was not justified. Like this one? Yes. Okay. Okay. So and, um, um, what else? What else? Then um, if you look at this main paper, yes, the head, I, I think it's close to the text. Um, yes front of it, I tried to move it down. Even if I use the space function, it didn't still work, so. Oh, all right, so, so the, the door is, it's good to have a feedback. So um, the, uh, so I, 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 I think um, your, your feedback would be like a chance to even learn more. So I, is it possible for you to share your, 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 um, your overleaf with us? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how you can do that. So if you go to your overleaf account, um, so the, the easiest way is... I can share my screen in about five, seven minutes. I would get to my um, location by then. Okay, y y yes, before you get to your location, I just want to show you, like you're going to share the actual document with me so I can um, help you out with it. So I just want to show you how, how you can do that. We, we, we did that last week, but just to remind you, so you, you can come to share here, then, then you copy the link, this, this first link that, that enables anyone with the link to be able to edit the document. So you copy this link and you paste in the chat box so we can we can fix all the issues together. So it's really good that you 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 tried the assignments and then every every issue you have will be will be addressed duly. So um yeah, so thank thank you for thank you. Trying. Yeah. So any other person that has tried the assignments.
yeah, any other person that has tried the assignment and um, that, that, that needs um, help with fixing some things there. Okay, in, in the absence of um, nobody speaking up, so I think um, Tomina will start like a quick revision of the last class. So when Ayomide is ready, he should let us know so that we can quickly fix his, uh, um, his uh, issues. Tomina, are you ready? Um, yes, I am. Okay, please, can you, can, you, can you just take us through a review of what you did in the last class? Okay. Um... Hello everyone. Um, so um, just a recap of what we did last week. Okay. So last week we showed us how to start our blank projects. And um, yeah, so um, yeah, so last week this was fresh. There was nothing here. And um, apart from these basic templates, and we were able to put this together last week. We were able to, we were able to talk about um, if you have um, your thesis and you want to put your table of contents together, your list of figures, list of tables automatically. So basically, we talked about the beauty of LaTeX and how it makes your work easier, easier. Okay. So um, let us see. Let us see. Let us see. Okay, so we talked about this document class article. So if you're writing an article, a journal, paper, or conference, so you specify this as article. But if you're writing like a book chapter, then you have to write book. So when you have something like this, because there are some um, commands that are, specific, that are specific for books and um, for articles, okay? So, yeah. All right, um, we talked about packages. So there are some specific packages that are needed in LaTeX. For example, if you want to deal with images, you need this package called graphics, all right? So based on whatever you're doing, you can, you, the, yeah. And um, another major thing that we talked about last week is the beauty of, um, Google and the fact that um, LaTeX has a very big community. So um, if you have any question, you can easily- I don't remember. You said? Um, I mean, you're going to say something? No, a mistake, please, sorry. Okay, okay all right, please continue. Okay. To my... So we talked about the fact that the community of LaTeX is very large. And if you have any question, you can just put it in Google and you're going to get um, your feedback, okay? So, um, okay, so we talked about the title, the title, so for example, if you have a, a project, the title of your paper, for example, your first um, project, the author, it's going to put the author there, the date, and then using this make title, okay? So. Okay, so we talked about comments. Once you put um percentage in front of anything, it nullifies, not that it nullifies it, it is a con it is a comment. So when you compile, this is compile. So this is your code area, this is where you put your code, and then you compile. When you compile, you can see everything you have done here. All right. So when you have something like a percentage, um it will be in your in your code. So the essence of comments like this is for you to know what you're doing. You can easily refer to what um, to what you're doing, right? So it's not going to be compiled. So um, for example, let me remove this make title and then let me recompile. Okay. So what make title does is what you have before you begin your document, your title, the author, the date, it's going to make it a title, right? So for you, you just specified the title of your work. You specified the author. These are called like metadata, data about data. 
all right so when you make use this make title it will create this um here all right okay so um we talked about sections sections so um for example in your thesis in your let me just say article you have section introduction introduction literature review and um and so on and so forth and um you have subsection subsection is a section under a section right so you can see that it is we have this sub intro this sub intro under introduction then you can have sub subsection so that is a mini intro okay so you can see that it is under sub intro we also talked about the fact that when you put a star in front of your section, when you put a star in front of your section, it will not give it a number. It will not give it a number. So, you know, there are some templates that maybe you don't need number one, introduction, number two, literature review. So when you put star there, for example, let me recompile this. When you put star there and you recompile um, your introduction, we have no number. Your literature review we have number no number you can see that our subsection here and sub subsection they have stars that's why they have no number but once you remove the star when you remove the star they're going to have um numbers so yeah so this is it okay so that is for sections so even before you start your work, right, you can have like, oh, okay, so I'm going to have my work, I'm going to have section, um, I'm going to have another section called um, um, maybe methodology, you know. You can actually, you know, itemize everything before you even start your work. Before you start your work, you can itemize everything. And whatever you do, you can find it here. Whatever you do, you can find it here, right? So, yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about how to underline. We talked about how to underline. So to underline a particular word or a particular phrase, you just use this command, underline. So let us look for vibration now, yeah? Okay, yeah, you can see that vibration, uh, um, we have it on the line. So if you want more than one word to be on the line, just make sure that it is inside this curly bracket. So whatever you, if you want on the line to be applied to a particular section of a particular phrase or even a particular sentence or more than one sentence, just make sure that you cap it with this curly bracket. So the curly bracket is trying to say that, okay, apply this on the line, to so whatever is inside this curly brackets, right? So this is text italics. If you want to italicize your word, so you can see that our thermal conductivity is under, um, we've um, italicized this, all right? And for bold, if you want to make your word bold, so this, this is text BF to make it bold. You can see that Amorous Solid is bold. Also, you can apply more than one, for example, um, this underline, we can also make it bold. So you want to also make it bold. Whenever you open a bracket, make sure you close the bracket. Okay. And um, you also want to italicize it. So we can also italicize it. So, um, yeah. So um, want to click Ctrl S it will recompile. So you can see vibrational, italicized, underlined, and bold. So yeah, so we talked about how to apply those fonts to your work. And um, let me see. Now we talked about the fact that you can reference your section once you apply a label to it. So for example, you are in section one, you have to, okay, in section one, you have your introduction. So you're in section two, literature review. Then you want to talk about, you want to write something like in section one, we talked about, but instead of writing in section one, you can just say in section, if you have given your, uh, if you have written something like this, 
uh, intro. Okay. So you can just say um, in section, you use this command ref, that is to reference, right? And intro. We talked about blah, blah, blah. So automatically, it will name this as in section one because section one is your intro, right? So automatically it will bring it out as, um, so you can see it here in section one. If you click on this one, it takes you to introduction. So you can use it to link your work. And we talked about the fact that there's a probability that you want to bring something from behind, you want to bring it to the top. You don't have to renumber. You don't have to do the numbering yourself. Automatically, it will do it um, for you. We talked about tables, okay? We talked about tables, okay? So to have a table, you begin your table. Using this command, you are trying to say, place this table here. So you can place your table at the top. If you write C, it will place it at the top of the page. If you write B, B, it will be at, um, below the page, at the, at the base of the page, all right? So, okay. So then you can give your table a caption. Now, there was a question last week because previously this caption, we put it below. So for example, if I control X and I bring it here, and I recompile. Where's my table? Okay. Oh, sorry, I moved it to the top. I moved it to the top. Okay. So, all right. So, this. Mm. Okay. So, if you remember previously, this was H. So, it's placed it here. But because I changed it to T, so it's moved it to the top of the page. Now, because I brought my caption below all this stuff. All right, so now my caption is below. But most times, if you check articles, captions are always at the top, right? So um, control X, put your caption here. All right, so um, to make a table, we talked about um, this. If you have five columns, for example, one, two, three, four, five, you have this CC. This is column, 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 column. If you put a line in between, you're trying to say, okay, let there be a vertical line in between my columns. So for example, you can see that I have deleted this um, vertical line in between these two C's. If I recompile, this line will not be there. It will no longer, yeah, so it is no longer there. So, so it depends on what you, you want your table to look like. If you want it to have um, a line, you can just put this line there, all right? And then you specify the adding. You specify the heading. Now, if you if you um, if you look at this this um, SN the serial number, it has no heading. So that is why we have nothing here. This and ampersand, it is used to like um, split the columns. Like you're saying, okay, move to the next column, move to the next column. So, but because we are not starting with anything, so it is recognizing it as nothing. Then ampersand, then X, then ampersand, then Y, then ampersand the Z and then yeah. So you move to a new line using this double right hand slash. Yeah, that's right hand slash, right? So you you it is used to move to a new line. Okay. And this H line, this command, it is used to put an horizontal line. It is used to put an horizontal line. So it is just about you following it step by step. All right. You put your heading, go to a new line put a vertical line. Okay, so I, in the, on, on the next one, I have one, then um, the next column 0 0.25, next column 0 0.25, next column 0 0.25, then use this one to go to the next line and you do that. And okay, for example, if I put slash H line here, all right, you're going to see that our table is going to have another line um, below. So 
um, yeah. So it recognizes your code as it moves. It recognizes the code as it moves. So that is that for table. Also for table, you can put a label. You can put a label. So that is why you can refer to you can refer to the table anywhere. You don't have to look for oh, it's table one. So now imagine if um maybe you submitted your paper and then you were told to do a revision and then the reviewer said add another table and the table you want to add is at the beginning of the of the manuscript you don't have to renumber yourself for example if you're working with microsoft Word, you have to renumber yourself for this you don't have to renumber yourself you can just say in table uh, in table slash ref um what was the label equal equate you were trying to say equation or something okay yeah so um we did some equation so um if you do this it is going to say in table one um i need to look for where this is okay in table one Okay, so okay, you can see that with these arrows, you can go to code location in PDF, and maybe if I'm here, I can go to PDF location in code. All right, so it makes it easy for you to go to where you're going to like easily move around. All right, so imagine if I place another table above this, if I place another table above this, because I already have this label. I am not the one numbering my table as table one. It will do it automatically. And so once I use this label, maybe this table is now table two. I don't have to change all those things manually. It will change it automatically. So that is um, latex for you. All right. We talked about paragraph and subparagraphs. Okay, so we talked about lists and enumerate. So if, for example, if you want to list, the difference between list and enumerate is the fact that for listing, um, listing is um, you're using um, bullet points, okay, bullet points. So you use this itemize, you begin. And for latex, whatever you begin, you end it. So if you remember in the beginning, we began our document. And at the end, we end the document. So inside begin and end, you can have another begin and end. So that is why we have this begin. So that is why we have this begin and end. Okay, so we, we want to begin to um, list some items, all right? So we use itemize because we don't we want it to be bullet points and you end it. So for each item, you just put slash item in front of it. So for each of these items, you can also do this on the line. You can do bold, you can italicize, you can do anything in it. So this is why um, Nigeria, Google, we underlined it. Togo, you can see that they are listed with bullet points. But if you want numbers, you use enumerate, all right? So um, you can also have your board on the line. So you use enumerate for numbers. Um, and we talked about the fact that why this is good for us is that, um, for example, you have a long list of items and you made a mistake. You want to bring the item at number 20 to number one. Once you bring the item at number 20 to number one, you have to change every other number, serial number. But for this, if I bring Togo here, and um, it will, it will, um, it will renumber it automatically. So Togo becomes number one and, you know, it moves it down. So, yeah, it makes your work easy. Um, we talked about um, we talked about figures, figures. Okay, so we talked about figures, and um, okay, so. You have to import your figure. If you want to use any figure, you have to import your figure. And to import your figure, you just upload. You can select from your computer and um, wherever your image is, the 
Okay, so um, everybody, I, I believe everybody knows how to upload. You just upload and um, you have it here. You can put all your figures in this folder, all right? And um, so to get your figure, you use this include graphics. If you want your figure, sometimes your figure can be, um, for example, where is that dam? Okay, so for example, let me remove this. All right. And um, let us recompile. So you can see that the figure is too big, right? So you can resize your figure. So with this, we are saying that, okay, we want it to, the width to be 0 0.7 of the original image. All right, like 70% of the original image, right? So you can put details about your figure here. Yeah. All right, if you want to scale it, you want to resize, so you can put all these things inside this place. And um, yeah, so this is the figure, it is still loading. Okay, so you can do that, okay. Uh, so for example, you have your figures for, the, the, okay, so another thing is it's auto completes for you or auto recommends. So, okay, you're writing figures already, it brings out figures and down, all right? So yeah, um, you can also label, label, that is you can refer. Normally when you write a manuscript, you have to refer to whatever table or whatever image you have in it in your text, right? Maybe during your discussion. So you can have um, in figure, then you reference label, fig them or whatever. This is user defined. You can define it as anything you want. It is user defined, right? And um, Okay, so okay, here we have two images. This is similar to the previous one, All right? So here we have two images, okay? And um, you want two images to be side by side. So you can see the code for um, for putting two images together, okay? And um, yeah, so um, because I think time, okay, references, let me talk about references, okay? References, um, you use package, use package, IPAREF, your bibli bibliography style. <laughs> okay, so for example, you want to use Elsevier article using numbers, numbers, okay? So you define it. If you are not sure of what you want to do, just go to Google. Um, what is the bibli bibliography style for Elsevier? Uh, maybe APA. It can be APA style, right? You can change this to APA, all right? And if it is numbers. So you create this, um, this file. You create this file. And you do not forget this um, .bib. So to show that you are using um, bib text, bib text. So for example, you want to get information about this article. Okay, so maybe this article, you just go to scholar.google and uh, maybe this one, who is this? So <laughs> maybe uh, machine learning or something. And um, if you want to cite, you click on this site and you click on bib text. So when you click on bib text, you just control A, you copy everything, and you bring it back to your overleaf, and um, you put it here, control V. So um, for me personally, I try to reduce this length. I just reduce it to the name of the author itself because it's too long. So, so, um, so, um, so in my main text, uh, maybe I want to cite that particular guy. I just use slash cite. Once, once you click on slash slide site, you, it will bring out the list of the people you have in your bib text. So maybe perils or something. And then um, control S, when I control S it, automatically it updates my references. And let me go to where it is cited in the paper. Uh, you, you can see it, it is now number three. Right. If you want more than one person to be cited, just put a comma and then who is the other person you want to cite? Click on this, control S, it will give you three comma one or one comma three or something. Three comma two because we've cited this guy before. And yeah, so 
you don't have to do all these things manually. Um, I don't know, is there any other thing we talked about last week? So, so far, so good. Um, yeah. Okay, so tables, figures, references, sections, and um, oh, equations. All right, okay. <laughs> Okay, so equations. <laughs> now for equations, it is it might be quite um hard to know um um what is this this one infinity this one gamma this one tau or something it might be uh, so you can just um 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 equations in latex. We we see see that some people they have probably my this thing it has such changed to so. so maybe you want to say how to write something sorry 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 please um such okay right so um. You can have um, examples and all, all right? So if you want to um, give an equation in text, this equation, you can see that it is inside the text. Okay, you use this, you use this um, dollar sign if you are citing in text. So you know when you're citing in text, you don't need equation number for something that is cited, for an equation that you have inside the text, like you're writing a sentence and stuff, you don't need equation number. But for this, you need equation number. So it will, it will give you the equation number automatically. So you use, just like the table, you begin equation and you end the equation. So inside this, you have E equals to M raised to power two. So you use this for raised to power, then plus sum. This is this symbol for sum, this submission, submission. So sum underscore, underscore means the things you want below. And because we have more than one. So for example, if I want just I to be here, I don't have to use this bracket because I'm going to have I equals to one. So I want to put everything together. That is everything inside this curly bracket should be underscore, should be under. So that is why I have I equals to one raised to power N. So that is why I have N. Then I can continue. I write fi, then plus product. Products. Um, this is a symbol for product. This one, and then just like this, we have it. And um, infinity. So maybe you want to write infinity. You don't know um how to put it in latex. You can just go to Google how to write infinity in latex. So you see this in in i n f t y infinity fraction. This is fraction, and you know so basically. That is it. Fraction is for this um, x over y, this kind of thing. Um, so this is epsilon over gamma plus tau. You can see that gamma plus tau here is inside the curly bracket. That is because if you don't do that, if you don't put this curly bracket, it will just give you, it will read it the way it is seeing it. So it will just give you epsilon over gamma, and then it will move to the next place, and then it will put plus tau here. So and you can also reference your lib, uh, your equation so that you can say um, in equation one or in equation two. Okay, as shown in equation one, for example. So you can see as shown in equation Einstein, all right? So it will just give you equation one directly. So even if you put another equation at the top of this equation, it will renumber it for you and it makes your work easy. So I think I'll stop here for recap so that we can move to the business of the day all right so yeah president thank you so much to Milaya, for the quick um, recap and then for showing ev us everything that we did last week so um to add to what, what you've done so I'm, I'm going to show us um how to how to um so i'm, I'm going to share my screen So usually, for for most of us, we don't know the the symbols. Finally, we might know what, how 
it should look like, but we don't know the name and we don't know how it's going to look in latex. So you could just come to and say latex math symbols. So if you if you Google latex math symbols, um, for me, I, I just go to images because it's easier that way. So when you open images, so you can see, uh, so. I, I, won't, I won't take this over. Yes, yeah, so when you come to images, you can see um, the the name of the name of the symbols and how to um, represent them in latex. For example, you can see the omega. If you want to represent omega, this is what it looks like. <laughs> if you want to represent gamma, this is what you need to put in your latex. If you want to represent theta, this is what you put. If you want to represent pi, if you want to represent tau. So if you come here, and um, let, let me go to the documents that we have here. Let's see. Uh, maybe, maybe before the references, maybe before the references. So if we, okay. So say for example, you, you, you start writing an equation begin, equation, and you want to write gamma. You could see from, from, from what, what we saw the other time, gamma is equals to maybe tau. You already saw what tau looks like, so, something like that there. So you, 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 you will compile and that's it. So another thing that we would want to add is that if you, yeah, yeah we, can, we can see the equation here. Gamma is equals to tau. So at the end of the day, you need to download your document. So you can download the document here as PDF. So I think I think I think that, that, that would be all for, for the recap. So the next thing we'll do before we move to um, teaching ourselves how to use um, LaTeX for presentation is we want to um, correct everything that um, IMD has in his um, assignment. So IMD, are, are you are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes. So so the first thing you said was the the image is this one yes yes so so you said something happened that you, you were able to do something so initially um i forgot how to caption it so what i yes. did i just went under centered the um text and then wrote the title of the the name of the image but later i realized how to caption it when i captioned it um this first image came under the neural network Okay. Yes. But then I went back up and then inserted new page and then it came back up here. But when I did the same for the second one, it yeah. also went down. Yes. So, so, so usually what happens is that the, 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 when you add captions to your document, you have a, a more bigger space to consume. And if if that image cannot occupy the available space, it will naturally go to the next page. Oh, okay, okay. So, so there are different ways to treat that. We're going to see um, very soon how to adjust spacing naturally. So I think I, I think another thing you said was... Um, so referencing my... I think Tom Lyo mentioned that while she was doing the recap. How uh, to... Yes reference your or cite your images or your figures basically yeah yeah, yeah. so so we're, we're, we're going to put it into good use here and we're going to see how to go about that so i'm looking for a place where you did the references so that we can make the corrections so for, for example most likely here, you see the question marks there yeah yes for example here this um thermal properties so you reference this one so this was what you did reference figures for tax this Right. Yes. Yeah. So I guess you wanted to reference um, the. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to look for it. So I guess you wanted to reference this one. I think so. I can't remember the names of the figures. Yeah, it's okay. So I think it's mm -hmm. maybe, maybe this one. Yeah. But... Yeah, figures two. This one, one or two. Two, I think two. Okay, so if you want to reference this second figure. Um, so I'm just going to go down to the figure. So you can double click on the figure. So it takes you there. So, um, okay. 
I, I actually for your for your figures and everything, there are some basic um issues with it. So I'm going to go to the to the previous ones that we did. So you oh, can okay. see here that when we want to put figures there, it starts with begin figure and end figure. Then okay. we use the include graphics. Yeah. So yeah. So so I'm I'm, I'm going to make some corrections here. So please call, you just, just just follow us. So slash begin. Figure. So once you press enter, you see that you can see like some things that comes with it. So easily, I could just um copy this. Here. Then you you make sure that the figure has like the same width. It's okay. You can copy it and paste here. So so after we've done this, I think uh, you wanted the name of the figure to be um, this, but you you didn't you didn't um, put it very well. So in this case, you're you're giving the figure a figure name yourself, like a figure number yourself, figure two. So yeah. now you don't need to do that. So just copy this neural network node inside this caption. So, so we're just copying and pasting into the into the um, sample being given. So after we do this, so I'm going to comment everything here out. So it, so it, it doesn't work. So I'm going to recompile and see what happens. Yes. So can, can we see it? Can we see it now? Like it looks neater, right? Yeah. Now, now, the reason why this is not bold is because of the class of is is because of the class you are using. So you you, you can, we can make edits to this in the class. So but by the time we are using templates, you would see the difference. So don't worry about it for now. Okay. So so now you can see that figure two and it was able to name it accordingly. So another thing is, if you want to reference, then you have to make sure that the, this label name is what you put in your reference. So say say our label name will be neural node, neural node, for example. This is our label name. So I'm going to copy this label name, and then I'm going to go down to where you did the referencing. Here. Okay. So so I'm going to copy this here. Then I'm going to recompile. Can can you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we we'll fix that. So what's another issue that you? I, I think. Yeah, so I showed you the text. Some of the um, lines were went overboard. Like they were not justified. They're not aligned. Yes. Yes. So. Since some of the lines were not justified, so I'm going to I'm going to show you what happened. So um, okay, so I'm, I'm just going to go there. So this one is an example, right? Yeah. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so the, the issues the issue the issue is because of here is because of this place. So you you wrote you you, you wanted to write like a sp goes for piggy, then counts and everything goes like that. So you can see that you are seeing like a form of error message here, because yeah. every everything here is more like an inline equation. So you have to put the dollar sign. You have to put it within the dollar sign. Oh. So okay. that. So when you put it within the dollar sign, it won't affect the rest of the documents. So now I'm going to recompile, and you're going to see what happens. Now I've done the. I've, I've recompiled now. Can you see that it has been fixed? Yeah. Okay. So. That's it. So uh, any other issue? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you said the main paper. So you you created you, you created a section here, but the issue is it it moved too close to the documents up, right? Yeah. So um, I'm going to the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this center because sometimes the the section might have its own formatting. So I'm going to compile again and see what happens. So um. Yeah, it's not doing what you want, but just do it. The first thing we want to do is we want to control this space. Now, the space we want to control is the vertical space. So um, you you can use V space. So V space, 
then you give it like a value. So you can save this space 0 0.5, for example, 0 0.5 centimeter. So that means it's going to increase the spacing between the last um, line and that's, so you can see it's a little bit down. So you, you, can, you can keep playing with this vertical space till you, you get the space that you want. Oh, okay. So vertical space works like in two ways. You can use to give more space and you can use to reduce the space. What do I mean? Now we use 0 0.5 centimeter. So it increases increase the space. Now, in a case whereby you maybe you feel the, the, the distance between this main paper here and this and this um, sentence is too uh, is too is too big, and you want to reduce it. So we're going to use vertical space again, and let's see how we're going to use it. The vertical space. So in this case, instead of just putting a value, I'm going to put negative value. So let's say minus zero point two centimeter, for example. So you would see the difference. Just just watch. It, it, it came closer, but it might, not, it might not necessarily be obvious. Let me make yeah. it 0 0.4, so you see. Can you see? Yeah. So is so, this vertical spacing the same as line spacing? For example, if you have to do double line spacing or single line spacing? Um, no, 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 it's, it's not the same. So uh, okay. the, the spacing of the documents is, is under setting that you can, you can do. Um, yes, so you, you, you can do the spacing of documents separately. So here, I think it's single line spacing. So if you want to make it double line spacing, it's either you use a particular template that use double line spacing or, or you, you edit the class. But I, I, we're going to explain that one now. If we have okay. more time after, the, after today, then we can show ourselves how to, you know, edit an, a, 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 a clearly defined class. So oh, that's okay. Yeah. Then okay, thank you. So the last minor thing, please, before we start the um, um for PowerPoint. Yes. In your in the original document, I was trying to copy what you did, where you put in the name of the institution under your name. That's the school's name. Um. Okay. So the, yes, I'm with you. When I did that, it was together. It, it continued the sentence with my name, like after my name. It just continued on one line, even if I entered to start from a new space, from, from a new line. When I recompiled it, it still went back to um, the same line. Okay, so so um, that one is, it, it's called a footer. So it, 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 was, it was in the template that we used. So it, when you use a template that has like already defined footer, so you don't have to stress yourself to try to make sure that it is in the foot of the page. So, um, after we do the BIMA class, we're going to see how we can do that also using templates. So, so do, 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 don't worry, before the end of the day, we're going to answer that question and show you how to go about it. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you too for attempting. So the next thing we're going to do now is to um, show ourselves how to use um, BIMA. So I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to show us some slides, then, um, then I'm going to um, make some practice for us, if that's okay. Uh, So we're going to go through uh, understanding BIMA and then the concepts. Then we add a little bit of spark if we have enough time before the next session. So um, BIMA is a flexible LaTeX class for making slides and presentation. So, uh, it's very similar to your PowerPoint, only that here yeah, it's majorly for scientific um, slides. So uh, you, you you can do everything you 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 can do with um, the normal LaTeX document here in BIMA. Also, you put the colors, you put like list, you put figures, you put every that in there. So we're going to see how to go through that. So the, the, the first thing that you need to understand is how a BIMA template looks like. So the in in, in the in the few um works that we've done before, the classes were usually article. Now instead of article, you're going to have like a BIMA as a document class. So like the other, 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 other types of um, slides that we've done in the past, where you have title, maybe subtitle, and you have the author. So you, you can have such in BIMA. So another thing you need to know is, just like your normal documents, BIMA starts 
and ends with begin documents and end documents. So every other thing that comes between is a frame. So like each page is a frame. So we're going to see that later. So now I'm going to show you how to, how to do that in LaTeX. So I'm going to open my overleaf again. I'm going to create a new project. So I'll create a very a blank project. I'll name it my first BIMA class, my first BIMA presentation. So we, we have to make this one BIMA. And then after we make BIMA, let's compare and see if we're going to see any difference. Okay. I'm going to just delete everything here. Okay, so um, let me explain everything I've done. Unlike the, the previous ones, whereby you have your, your document class and articles, so in this case, it's going to be BIMA. So in this BIMA, then after you define a document class, the next thing for you to do is to define the mode and make sure it's a presentation. So you can also give the title and maybe the title is for slides. Then you can give it some title, but let's just leave this out. So I'm just going to change the author name to my name. Um, we, we have someone talking in the background. Please, can you uh, mute yourself? Thank you so much. So um, yeah, that's it. Yes. So. Once we've done this, so we are familiar with this begin and end documents, begin document and end documents. So every other thing that comes between is begin frame and end frame. So if you want to create a frame, you start begin. So once you type frame and you press enter, like it already closes it. So you can give your frame a title, say maybe introduction. And you I, and when you recompile, let's see what happens. We can see introduction. So if you want to create another slide, you can you can also um, put begin frame. And let's say this one is maybe methods. We can see here how. It's created another um, slide methods. Let's continue and create another slide under frame. So we call this maybe results. Let's create another one and maybe we call it uh, conclusion. So I'm going to recompile. So we can see the slides easily. 
um, the next thing that we're going to look at is how, how to populate our slides. So we're going to populate our slides with everything that we've done, we've used in the previous class. So say for example, you, you want to put like contents in your slides. So I'm just going to copy and paste some contents here. So I'm going to copy and paste this here. So um, for now, we are not going to do any referencing. So I'm going to recompile again to see what my introduction slides becomes. Yes, so, so we can see that everything we copied, it, it, the ones that we were in bold, the ones that were bolded and the underlined, the one in italics are just the way they are. So your your slides can just be as similar as to your to your normal normal um, article so another thing that we we learned in the uh, in the last class is um so let, so so we're going to just check and we we're going to put everything in slides so say for example this particular table okay So I'm not going to use this. So, so let, let's check I mean, this um, document and see if there's a list or any ways that we can make use of. So I, I, I am they helped us with this. So I am they added some, some um, enumerations here. So we're just going to copy and paste everything here. And we're going to paste it in, into our met methods. So everything will be inside the begin and end frame here. So if you copy this, I will compile and let's see what happens. Yeah, so it, it's so much words. So I'm just going to delete some things there. Something went wrong. Yes, so so I, I just will compile. So I copied um some some items from IMD's file here, and we can see the same the same kind of rendering. So you, you when you want to create a slide and you want to create like numbered um, items, you can do it this way. So I'm I'm going to do something similar with uh, itemize and we we'll see, we're going to see the results. So maybe after this end frame, you could also come down and then uh, maybe you, you, we're going to create another frame and call it um, approach, for example. So I'm going to, I'm going to recompile. Then I'm going to look for something to put there, maybe for my um, this documents again. So we can see the approach. Let me see what we can take. Okay, so so we don't we don't have we don't have any other things to copy. So I'm just going to go here and maybe copy something else. Um no, it's it's not important. I think we can just um generate some approaches ourselves. So let's say begin, itemize that we are familiar with. Then we start with, we studied the influence of corruption on the masses. Then we create another item. We also studied 
the influence of the environment of the environment. So I'm trying to populate my slides on. Yes, so so I have added like three items. So um, I'm I'm going to compile now and see what happened. So can we see this? So in, in what if we feel like maybe these three items are too closely packed and we want to separate them, for example. So we we can just come to maybe between the items. So even if you create space like this, we already know that um latex does not understand white space. So we're still going to have the same results. So one thing we can do is we can also use this vertical space and put maybe 0 0.2 centimeter. Let's see what happens. So compared to this, we can see like we have more space here than here. So let's make it 0 0.3 to make it more obvious. Yes, it's more obvious now. So we also need to copy this vertical space um, here too, so that we can have like consistent spacing. Yes, we can see this. So another thing we can do is we can also have an item like itemize within an within another itemized contents. We can also have enumerate within within it. So so the, the, what what I mean is we can have nested items. So what, what do I mean? So um, I'm going to come here and create an item within this within this itemize. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to start it under begin. Begin, itemize. On maybe. So I'm going to recompile and let's see what happens. Yes, can we can we see this? So if if I also feel like maybe the space here is not wide enough, so I'm going to go after this itemize here and put another space in there using vertical space. Yes, so 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 we can see this. So um, we can we can also make our slides using something so intuitive, the, just the way we we did our last class. So another thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to add figures to images, figures and images to our slides. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and create a folder. So I'm going to call the folder figures. So the next thing is I'm going to download some figures from Iomedia's um, file. And uh, I think it's here, figures. So let's let's download some images. So I'm going to download maybe this. No, 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 let me use this. I'm going to download this. I'm going to download this. Um, yes, I'm going to download this too. Yeah, and this. So after I download it to my local machine, the next thing for me to do is to um, upload them here. So of course we on, we know we now know how to upload documents. So you can also select from your computer. But somehow I I like 
dragging. So I'm going to come to my downloads. I'm going to select all the figures I need to import. Then I'm going to drag it them here. Yes. So if you come to this result here, so once you start, maybe slash begin figure. Of course, you can see suggestions from Latex. So the next thing for us to do is reference a figure here. So by the time you start typing figures and you put the name of the figure, like the address of the figure inside include graphics. Let's see what happens. We, we can see we can see this, but somehow it's so big that we can see the the, the caption being um, hidden. So the next thing we do is similar to what we did last week. We're going to reduce we're going to reduce the scale of the image. So we're going to say the scale should be maybe zero point five of the text width. We can see a suggestion here. So if we compile again, let's see what happens. Okay, 0 0.5 is not doing enough justice to what, what we want. So let's make it smaller. Okay, we are still not seeing any results. Okay. So what we didn't do is to put the weights that we want. So we want the weight to be equal to 0 0.5. So by the time, by the time we, do, we do this and we compile, we see the difference. Yes, we can, we can see the difference now. So we can, of course, we, 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 can, we can put a caption here and say, um, so let me just check out um, this uh, um, document and still is an um, option. So, so let's just use this. So if I, if I compile, we see what happens. So e equally, you can you can use this your caption. Sometimes for me, I I might not name my my figure something like this. So I might just put this this caption as the slide title. So I can just delete all this. So instead of having this this frame title as results, I'll put the caption. So, so let, let's let's see the difference. Yeah. So another thing is sometimes like I want to explain my results, so I want to make it in line. So I'm not just showing just the figure. So I'm going to put some bullet points here, like um, itemize. So let's start begin. Itemize. So I'm going to create some items. So uh, the, the first one is, yeah, we can see that a decline is so, in so-so is observed and there's an obvious increase in W. So, but this is not, but this is not necessarily W, this is Omega. So we can also use our inline equations here. So the first thing we put dollar sign, then slash Omega. So because I know it's Omega, if you don't know it's Omega, you can of course come here and Check. It is as of, you, you you see the name as Omega. So I'm going to recompile and we see. 
here. So, so, so we can see how we, we have been working with our slides. So here we pasted just text. Here we showed ourselves how to put um, an, an enumerations. Here we, we showed ourselves how to use itemize and use nexted items. Here we show ourselves how to present our results by using figures and then um, bullet points. So the next thing is maybe we have a table that we want to use to explain in our slides. So same, you could start with begin. Of course, you put in a frame. So let's make it, let's make the title of the frame results. So I'm going to recompile, then I'm going to look for a table to put there. So we've created that, we've created the results here. So the next thing I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to go to maybe the, 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 the file from last week. I think we have some tables there. So I'm just going to copy and paste the tables. So say, say this is the table I want, this. All I need to do is just copy this table. So the reason why I'm showing you this is sometimes we want to add making our documents. So with LaTeX, you don't have to do things all over again. So th this is one advantage of using LaTeX over maybe using MS Word and PowerPoint. For example, if you make something in PowerPoint in MS Word, you have a document in MS Word and you want to put everything in PowerPoint, sometimes you have to focus on formatting and stressing yourself all over again. But with LaTeX, that same code that you've written before for your document, just copy and paste into your slides. So it makes your slide um, done as fast as possible. So a slide that you can do maybe in two hours using PowerPoint, you can probably do in 20 minutes using LaTeX because so, so far you have the content, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to bother yourself about the formatting. So I'm going to copy the table here. Then I'm going to recompile and let's see what happens. Yeah, so, so we can see the table. Um, yeah, so um, so the same thing, if you actually want this equilibrium composition to be your, your title, of course you, you can just remove this caption and delete the whole caption line. So I'm going to replace these results with this caption and let's recompile so that we can see. Yeah. So, so, so far our, our slide is really, is looking really good. And um, let me see if there's any other thing that we've not done. Yes, so uh, in, in this case, it's more like you're having items, you're having uh, equations in between and all. So you, ca you can also do this with um, something that we've done before. So um, I'm just going to show you an example of how you can do something like this. So if you, if you start, so I'm going to create another uh, page, slash begin, frame. Maybe results also. So I'm going to begin my itemize. Then maybe A is not so good. Then I come down here and say another item. B is really nice. And I want to put an equation here. Of course, you can put an equation here. Maybe I'm going to make the equation like um, without equation number. So I'm going to just put maybe tau is equals to frac theta plus five over two uh, 
So, um, I'm going to recompile this and let's see what happens. Here. So say for example, you want to put another equation here too. So the only thing is you just put the equation after the item, before the next item. So, so something like this. So you 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 as the researcher, you are the one that knows exactly what you want, and, and LaTeX will help you get it easily. So we already showed ourselves how to use list, put images, and put tables. So basically, that that's 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 the that's the basic um, explanation that you need for for slides. So the next thing that we want to show ourselves is now we've seen we've seen these slides. We can actually make our slides more beautiful, more 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 presentable than basic. So we so now the the focus is to make our slides extra. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start introducing us to templates. So I'm going to search overleaf templates. So let me go to Google. Google. So I'm going to search overleaf templates. So if I search overleaf templates, so you can see the first option here. So, so we're going to cl click on it. Now you 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 find your slides under presentation. So there, I, I think there there are over a thousand already prepared slide templates that we can use for our day to day work. So the so um I'm going to, I'm going to take us through this. So even people from city you have like a city use um slides. So let, let let me show you how it looks like. So if you want to see. An overview of the slides, so you can just come to view PDF. So you can see like a sample of the slides. You can see a sample of the slides. So I'm going to go back and um, show you more 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 slide templates. So you can also find slides for PolyU, and I'm sure like almost all schools in Hong Kong, you find like a template for their slides here. So say for example, you, you want to use slides for PolyU, you can also look at how the template looks like. So it was created by someone in PolyU not long ago. So let's see what it looks like. So if if this works with you, of course, by all means you can you can um, you use the use the template. So um, there is another thing. Even me from HKUST can decide to use these slides. The only thing I need to do is to make sure that um, this symbol is not is not there. So I'm going to show us how to walk around that. So for example, I I I I want to use this slide. I feel maybe it's simple and then. Um, is it to you? It's simple and I, and, I, and, I, and I like how it's it's done. And I see this big symbol there, and I, and I don't I don't know what to do with it. So one thing I'll tell you what you can do with it, and how you can uh, make things work. So so I just go do a little bit of arc, and then we'll see what happens. So the first thing is you have to understand how the slide is. So so let, let's wait let's wait for the slide to come up. So so we can notice that this symbol is here. And it's also here, so so I'm going to show you like a cheat on what to, what to do to make things work very fast. So I'm going to download HKUST logo, and I'm going to replace it. So so let 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 us let's, let's see how we, we can do that. So I will download HKUST logo for example. See this logo I'm working with. So I'm going to save this logo. Okay, it's okay. 
So another thing is I observed that the 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 documents there, the particular logo there is PDF. So I'm going to convert the logo to PDF. The next thing is I'm going to get this particular name here, this particular name, I'm going to get it. Then I'm going to um, rename my HKUST logo to, to that part, to the exact name. So once I do that, I'm going to upload that same logo here. And I'm going to overwrite the existing one. So once I override the existing one, I'm going to go back to my templates, then I'm going to compile it and let's see what happens. So we are having a particular error. So, so I guess I'm just going to reload this. I think try clearing the log or something. Um, and then try to reload. I'm coming. So I think um, it's 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 more. So I want to compare from the scratch and see. If it doesn't work, then I guess it's it's because of the, the template is hard coded. So mm -hmm. make sure that it doesn't work with any other logo. Okay, so so I'm not going to stress myself to try to fix this in this class. So, but it's okay. So if we, okay, I'm going to choose another template anyway. So I'm going to go back again over leaf templates. So. Um, so, for example, I, I'm looking for a very colorful template to use. Okay, so I'm just going. To, I'm just going to go back to the first slide and choose, maybe maybe CTU, CTU or anyone. Yes, so so we should just work with the CTU um, templates. So the next slide, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to convert everything here to the CTU template and see what we can do with it. Um, I'm going to start by clicking the title here. So if you double click on title, so it takes you to the, 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 the naming. So in, in this case, the, the, this, this CTU logo is here. So if, if you want to if you want to change this you logo to uh, maybe another thing, all, all you need to do is to um come come here and then adjust it accordingly. So I think I, I think I should just do the same with with um HKUST logo and see if we're going to have um, like a good result.
Yeah, yes, it, it, it worked. We we're able to change your logo. So um now it's not that we're using a template, so we just want we just want to see how we can make all the edits that we need to make. So the next thing that we want naturally want to do is to change this some type to some supply to. So we have to look for it. So we should look for it together. Yes. Yes. So we can see this um some title here, some subtitle here. So if you change it to maybe anything, let's see. Uh, I want you to compile this. Yes, we can see this. So um, for this title, can, can someone give us a title? Maybe maybe your presentation. Let me lie. Be my class. Be my class, thank you. So since we're using um, CTU template, you can see the, the full tab, City University of Hong Kong, everything. So I think this footer, I think we can control it by changing this. So, so let me just change this to HKUST, for example. So let's see what happens. So changing this one has made change our footer to HKUST. So the next thing is we want to, we want to make sure that uh, we have like maybe our things there. So say for example, you want to change everything here. So you need to come here, look at this. Uh, you, the author's name here. You can see A, B, C, two. So basically when you're working with templates, you are editing a template and making it work for you. So say for example, I want to put my name, I'm going to put my name here. Let's see what happens again. Okay, you, you can see my name in the footer and it will, it will be in all, all slides. So next is, I want to change this email to reflect what I want. So to say, for example, I'm going to put my email. So I'm going to recompile again and see what happens. Yes, okay. so we can see that it has changed. The other thing is we can see that um, the dates it, this is meant to be the dates, but you can override the dates by putting your own thing there. Maybe I want the dates to be, um, I want the date to be maybe, January to 2022. So, so we can, so I'm going to look up and we'll see. So you can see the dates here, January 2022, on all the slides at the footer here. But, but what if I want the date to be the date of my presentation? Maybe, maybe the date of compile. So you can put slash, I think today works, slash today. So slash today should get the exact date for, for the current date. So we can see July 30, 2022. Um, so the last thing here, is to change, let me change this to Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And maybe this one to today. So I'm going to recompile and do it. I'm going to recompile so that we can see. Yes. So we, we start with a, a particular slide. Now we are make, making it work for us. So the next thing that I want to do is we want to understand what, what it looks like. So you can just go down and see. So look for begin documents and end documents. So in this particular slide, um, it, it, well, I'm going to introduce us to what section means. Section means like you, you want to group different parts of your presentation. So if you want to group that, you start with section, just like the, 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 
with the things they were with, with the documents. So section, section, then you put any frame inside the section. So we're going to see how that works. Now, from this other, other one, we're going to come here. So we're going to copy this slide, introduction, everything from begin frame to end frame. So we come here, we're going to paste it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. So we're going to do another thing. Uh, here. So after after our introduction, we had our, our methods. So these two slides here, they're under methods. So, the, so naturally, you put them in the same frame. So we're going to create another section. Sorry, we're going to create another section. And put maybe methodology, for example. So once we created this section, the next thing for us to do is to just copy both frames. Make sure you copy everything. So we're going to copy them. And we're going to paste. Let's compare and see. So, and I want us to observe the contents here. It's still recompiling, but let, let's see when it's done. So now we can see that we have like three contents now, introduction, methodology, and conclusion. So this, so this is like, you, 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 are, you are making like a table of contents. So let's see. So we can see that difference. Here we are using like round points instead of arrows, small arrows. So it's because of the templates we are using. And we can see for our enumerates, you can see how it presented it. So templates brings beauty to, you, to, to your work. So the next thing that I want to do here is, um, these next slides are like results. These and these are results. So naturally we'll come after this approach. Yeah, I'll say um, section, we'll create another section, results. Once we do that, we'll, let's recompile again before we copy those slides there. So um, now I'm going to come here, copy everything here. To here. Yeah, I'm going to recompile and let, let's see. So I'm expecting a, a particular error to happen somewhere. So we, we, we're going to see what happens. Now, now the, the, the issue here is we 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 copy this a slide there without having the right figures. Oh, okay. So I'm going to make sure that I, I upload that particular figure here. So, so let me upload everything here and let's see if we're going to have the same issues. Okay, we're still having the same issue. The reason why we're having the same issue is maybe um, I think um, LaTeX is case sensitive. So the figures here is like capital F and the one here is small letter F. So let's just be smart and then um, change this to small letter F and let's recompile again and see what happens. Yeah, like it works. So as expected, we already have another uh, section on the table of contents. So it, it makes sense like this. So you, we can see the difference between this, this slides and this. So this, this looks blank, blank and then bland. Then we have a little bit of color and everything here. So, so the, the, this is what LaTeX, LaTeX can do for you. It makes you generate slides on the fly, very easy. You don't have to bother about design. 
you don't have to bother like you have to do this one you have to do that so latex is doing everything for us for for the methodology um section it created this for the next section it created this maybe to have a pause then we have this so um th th these are many more are what um latex can can do for you so i think uh, without taking much of our time uh, we should take like a five minutes break and um, con come back by no, four minutes break and come back by 250 so that uh, we can have like our class on them um, using templates for faster document production where you can with them um, show us how to use them um, templates for your poster production. So do, do, do we have any questions before we go on the five minutes break? just a recap so um thank you very much for your time once again but yes um this section basically just um creates like an introductory page um yes. slide to um what do you call them to the new um slides you want to create yes and it makes it easier for you then it helps you to organize your your, your contents so now we have a table of contents so maybe on an introduction you have like five slides so but you, you want to make sure that you have you have everything summarized on like a particular thing. So introductory slide, methodology, results. So you can see everything in your table of content. So before your presentation, you can tell your your listeners what to expect without telling them the the, the, the title of every slide you have in your presentation. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So after every section created, you must um begin and end the frame. Yes, you you must begin and end the frame. But but sections are are not um, compulsory you, for your slide. You might decide not to put sections there. So far, so far, you would you not want to use the table of content. It's optional, but begin okay. and ending a frame is necessary. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So um, five minutes break. Then we'll come back and we'll show ourselves how to use LaTeX for your posters and how to use LaTeX for, to make your CV for people who are job hunting. So we'll come back in like um, maybe two, two fifty three. Yeah. All right, see you soon. Can you start your session? Thank you so much. Yes. Okay, so let's get right down to it. So in this session, I will be dealing with um posters. So I'm going to share my screen right away. So I believe I'm visible. My screen is visible, I guess. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to come right down to templates. I think for what's left in this class, everything we're talking about is manipulating templates. So I believe you can see my mouse too, my mouse cursor too. So here I have templates, or I come here, I choose new projects maybe, and it gives me templates here. So in fact, coming right here gives me poster straight up. So I may not have to come to the template here. If I use the template on this menu tab, I may have to set out you know specific posters I want to use because this will be a compilation of several templates, CVs, posters, articles, journals presentations and likes so but from here I think this already sorted it out so I'm going to pick posters and it's going to give us a gamut of options so we're going to look for something simple and straightforward to play with and I think this is about right the real poster template you can see here can we see this in the center of the screen yeah yeah okay so I'm going to click on this if I can click thing you can play with. So we can actually look at the PDF version to have a preview of what it will look like by the time we're done. And we have it here. So this is an interesting thing to play with. So this looks good. So I'm going to go straight into the template itself and start editing. So this is going to be done on the fly. And I expect that you can give your own contribution. So here we go. So we start with a document class here. I think the way this is done, it's actually built 
from the Bima template, but then it's a modified Bima sort of with several elements. So this is not like a straight up Bima with multiple frames, but I think there's a single Bima page and then the different parts of the page are carved out to house different elements. Be yourself, people. So there it is. So we can adjust this a little so we have more space. So where do we get started? So let's start from the title. Or should we play with it? Okay, let's just play with the, say one or two images. So let's get this. So if you look, come around here. Okay, post the title. So remember, once you double click on the title, it takes you to exact. So why is not doing that? Okay. Actually, once you double click on an element, you take you to where it is in the in the in the in the uh, in the code. I don't know why it's not doing that, but let's not waste time. So here's the poster title. Let's say post the flash. Let's just say want to do this. Okay. Let's say post the class. So, so start building from that. And then first author. Let's say Kenny O. And uh, let's say um who else is in the class? This is Kenny and uh, let's see, um, I'm not just okay. Let's see, um, so let's see what this is going to give us. My computer is running really slow. So we can see here, here are the names. Okay, and as you can see, I believe this INSP poly bracket one gives you like um like a super what's it called down like a super script to indicate the order of authorship. So mm -hmm. institution, you can decide to take this out, maybe, or should you do this? Institute of our one appreciation and say, um, short institute, let's say HKUST. Uh, oh, sorry, that's not where I wasn't supposed to put it there. Auto one application, I think I just put it here. Let's say, um, HKUST, and uh, I think, um, you. And Mr. Um, please watch university are you from? Lignan. Lignan, right? Yeah. So that should do it. Let's see what that gives us. So as you can see, we have this in place. So let's go to the abstract. Oh, footer content. I believe you know what the footer does. That's all what you have below this orange line here. Mm. So, venue, the country, let's say venue, let's say Zoom, country. Just to um, stop you a bit. So if okay. we were to change this footer um, content here, similar yeah. to what um, the president did, um, yeah. for the PowerPoint, where he changed, um, he, he uploaded the images. Is that the same thing we're supposed to do here? Yes, yes, yes. That's okay. exactly what you're gonna do. So it's like the same approach, but different uh, layouts, depending on the kind of document you're presenting. Oh, okay. Yes. Let me see if today works, yeah? And then mail to email address. Let's just say, 
the USB. The PDU. Let's just see what that uses. It's not going to change the address because um, it, you, you only change the link. You didn't change oh, the, 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 the address proper. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's just do this then. Can you see? I suppose that should do it. So um, for the images, I think we can always go back into what we have here. So you can take a lot, change all of this, okay? So let's say instead of, let's say, let's say instead of an elephant, we want to put, let's say, book. Let's say we want to do this. So you can actually print in a document here. And new file. Book. So we can actually replace the elephant. Let me see. This takes us to the elephant. No, I don't know why that's not working. Anyways. So let's see what what have we done so far. We've done we dealt with all of this, all of this, all of this. Um, okay. Let's move on to the abstract then. So begin document. Add to be my template headline. Now all of these are like um, metadata. Okay. All what we have here, they are like metadata. Okay, and then the describe specific functions of the image and i think we can actually play with it to you know give us like what exactly they do okay for example if you look at this anchor i believe that's the position that it is attached to that's northwest so northwest maybe somewhere around here okay and i think we can actually go around all of this to actually see where exactly each of those centers are located and looking at this is northeast and then you can see this here. Now, if you look at what I'm trying to say, this, this logo here, look at this, the real logo. This logo here. Do you see that here? Can you see it here? Yeah. Yes. And then the same thing goes for this CRT SFI logo.pdf, which that's what you have on the right hand side here. Okay. I wouldn't do deal, tamper with that first of time. But I think that we have a general idea of what's happening here. Is that correct? Do we? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not going to talk about that. So let's see what other um, stuff do we have here. Um, CUD footer. Look at this. That's CU Dublin. Okay, this is definitely going to be Southwest, which is what we see. Actually, I'm not very familiar with a lot of this, but once you can identify an element that looks familiar, you to use to, you know, build up the big picture. Okay, so this Southwest, and then we also see TUD. So basically combining those two, I can actually identify from the template that this is TUD. And of course, it's located in the Southwest corner of the document. Okay. So I think that's about that. I'm not going to deal with all this. I'm not going to touch them rather, but I believe that when you, putting your own content into this, you should play with the parameters a little bit to see what it gives you, to see what the variations actually gives you. you might get something better compared to all this. So this is a frame, or is it a mini frame now? I think it's a frame. So column, separator column, I think um, this is the abstract. Okay, this is the abstract, which is what we have here, the first subsection we have to the left, top left hand corner. And this is like the content of this abstract. So obviously this is a list. So an item, test one, this one. Um, let's just say first. Okay. This, uh, 
Your text. Okay. So this is a random gibberish text for tons. Let's say some stuff. I think I left something else. About posters, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah. So let's check it out. So we see that we've modified the abstract, as you can see here. Okay. And um, please hold on, I wanna check out something. Now look at, I actually wanted to confirm, if you look at the way there's this command here in the abstract, begin, and then you, there's actually a specific, very, it's actually a specific colon. It's actually a specific column width here. Actually, this is a column descriptor, and this is a specific column width. It's a numerical value, but it's not given here. Rather, it was declared, for those who are familiar with computer programming, it was declared at the start as a global variable, So, which is what you see here. So whatever you see column width. Now, this also how you, this is also similar to how you define custom commands. In LaTeX, you can actually define custom commands. I'm not very cool with, I'm not very, proficient with that, but I believe um, the president is gonna mention something related to that, perhaps after I'm done with this session. It's actually a very easy way of making things easy for you. For example, you have a very long combination of commands. You can actually just declare it as a very simple, straightforward command at the top of your document. And then you then give it how you wanna call it with a very, say, a very short a variable name. So that way you can actually compress, compress very complicated or unique commands that may not exist by itself in later. You create it, you, you compress it, and then you can use it at will, wherever you want to. So please take note, Mr. President, please show us that after I'm done, because I'm, I don't really remember how it's done. Okay, okay, all right. Yes, so back to what I was saying. So looking at column width here, it's actually defined here. So automatically, and it has a specific value. It has been given 0 0.3, that's 30% of the paper width. And we can see here by visual assessment, the abstract column actually carries, just occupies 30% of the column width, okay? So we can see that here, that's 30%. We can actually play with it a little bit just to, you know, be sure. So it's what we have here. So whenever we call column width, and throughout the document, they're gonna see exactly that value, which is what we have here. So I'm not gonna touch that as I described what it does already. So that is the first per column. And then this is um, a second sub column. So, and by the way, you can see the, the indentations you see here gives you an idea of how this is working. Now, if you look at this begin column, column width. Now, everything here, okay, everything we see here, okay, actually falls under this begin column. Do you see that? And apart from indentation, we can ask, this is a beginning column and then it's an end column. So everything within this begin and end column will be together, will be described by the same general variables, okay? Are we together here? I believe we're following? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So let me just change this to our numbered list. So basically we are working with this second um, part of that column. So this is an enumeration item, the so first text reference to, um, now obviously this is this figure here. This figure here is figure one, okay? And um, let me just change, should I change it? Should I put caption? No, I don't need to, let me just look at this. So this figure here, 
what do we notice? It's what we have here. Okay. So that actually happens to be in the next uh, subcolumn. So what we have here is the first item, let's say first second text, just to and then let's say third text. And uh, I'm not going to talk to handle this. And that is followed by the image beneath it. I'm not going to replace that. Or should I? Okay, let me just, since I already brought an image, this is book.jpg. Let's say book. So let me just use that. Let me compile and see what I have. The one place my habit is the size of the image. I didn't touch the size of the image for bringing it in. And well, thankfully, it fit right in. So as we can see here, as we can see here, as we wanted it to be, that's actually what we have here. Okay. So this is the ref this this image we have is refreshed from this first uh, list item on the list there. So we are ending this block. So another really important. Um, command to take note of is block command. A block command is very good when you want to contain, um, when you want to contain, uh, what's called, when you want to contain uh, a portion of your document or a portion of text. Now, a block command was also used for the abstract, but you are going to notice that there's a little difference between these two. Number one, this is an alert block. While this is an ordinary block, I believe the alert block highlights the base or like it gives like a, it, it, it frames it within a colored uh, base. So I believe this info box will also be within an alert box. Now, let me go check out the info box just to be sure. Looking at the features, has anybody seen the info box? Info box, info box. If you double click on this, won't it take us to where it is? It's supposed to, but I think this document doesn't have that feature. Probably because of the of the of the of the document class. Oh, okay. I think the document class doesn't check have... line one fifty one. Oh, okay, thank you. Line one fifty one. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay, this is it. Now this is another. This is another way. Oh, interesting. Here they use color block color box. Okay, so this is color box. I'm not very familiar with this command though, but I think the fact that these are put within, let me see. Sorry, please hold on. I want to separate the image. The image ends here, that's the figure ends here, and then the, okay. So basically, these commands do the same, similar things the color box and the alert box. Where is the alert box? The alert box, on the other hand, it gives its unique behavior to the heading. It gives a unique behavior to the heading. Oh, sorry. So this is the abstract, and the alert box gives a unique behavior. Now, I want to see if we try something else. We try the same thing, alert block, alert block. So if I try the same thing with, say, the experiment. Now, this is the experiment, right? I think the experiment should come after the book image. Good. Let's make this a lot block. And then we have to end lot block, right? A lot block. So let's compile this. See what it is. Oh, do you see what just happened? Yeah, he joined the two. Um, exactly. So two. essentially, I was supposed to. Let me let me just do this. It was blocked before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if I had actually created a beginner lab, let's say I did this. Let's assume I did this. I think begin. 
um, I think that's what they call it, Bradley, right? And now, so. So I just copy the command. Control C. Let's say at the end, let's say um, Control V instead of a lot I put end. So we see that we have an auto debug feature. So let's see how will I do this. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Overload. Okay, let's take it out. Let me take it out. So let's make sure it's all in working order. Okay, yeah, back where we started. Okay. I think the I think the reason it didn't work was because like you you didn't give it like a header, a header. for the uh, like you, okay. you, you the, 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 but but then I think I think it, it's not necessary. So I think um you already explained how the whole okay. stuff look works. No out. idea. Right. Okay. That that's what uh, that's what is important, right? Okay, all so, right. Let me just run through what's left then. So we okay. pass it on to the next person. We're almost out of time. Okay. So. I believe, I, I think every other thing just follows the same principle, basically. Every other thing follows the same principle. Every other thing follows the same principle. And then for this info box here, we can just probably, I think the only thing we can just do here, line 151, right? So heading, I think you can just make it centering. Wait, is it centering? Right. Let me see. <laughs> Wait, and probably this. Oh, oh, it's already an heading. I don't need to do that, actually. It's already a heading, rather. So I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. I think it's not. Oh, sorry, please. I'm... Sorry about that. I had a call. I think because it's already an heading, so it doesn't have to. It, does, it doesn't work that way. So if I'm faced with a challenge like this, what I would naturally do is just to just sign on to Google and check it out and debug and debug until I find what I'm looking for. Okay, so without taking much time, I'm just gonna hand it over to the next in line. So I think the next session is gonna be about um, how to play with CVs actually. So before we do that, any, any questions from this? Any questions from this? Does anybody have any questions? I think we're all clear then. Are we? Or we just have to play with it. <laughs> yeah, basically that's what we're gonna be doing now. So that's it. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to the president. So please go on with it. So oh, okay. Uh, uh, is it possible to share me the, the link for this? Okay. Mm, so me... so I, I want to make some clarifications. Let me try that in a chat box, see if it works. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing now. Try this, see. Okay. Is it working? I you want to try. Or better say, let me just share. Oh, no, no, I think I think I think it's okay. 
I think it's okay. Let me just. Uh, I I don't have permission. Try this instead. This should work. I have another link in the chat box. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's something to work. Join project. Yeah. Okay. So, can we all see? My, can we all see my screen? It's loading. Yeah. It's screen is visible. So, so there, there is one thing I want us to understand. Basically, any template you use as like a particular format, you only need to understand that format to make good use of it. So um, I think I, I should just wait for, for this to compile, then I can explain what I mean by that statement. So, so the basic thing is when you look at this template, one thing you can observe is the, the, the way it's structured. So that there's there is an header here, then there is a footer, then we have the content, and this content is divided into three columns: column one, column two, column three. That is why here we were able to set the length of the column. So this is you setting the length of the column to 30% of the paper width. So that means you're making each column to take 30% of the column width. For example, if I make this maybe three, three, for example, you will see that there, there won't be any form of space in between. So it's going to be back to back. Yeah, something like this, but it it, it 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 wouldn't make too much sense that way. So that, that's why we have this. So after we divided everything into columns, then the other thing that we need to understand is everything here happens within the colon. So for example, we have to we have to, we have to make a colon, colons of colons. So the first thing is, the everything here is just like a frame of a bima class. So um, it it can mention earlier that this is a bima. But it's just much different, yes. So it's a beamer and it's just a, a, a single slide. So because it's a single slide, everything here will fall between a frame. So, so, so I want, I, I'm going to show us the frame and I'm going to show us everything. So this is the frame. The frame starts here and that particular frame ends here. Now within the frame, what happens? You have colons. How many colons? You have three colons. So we see where the colons started from. So you have colons, and the colons end just before you end the frame. Then once you define that you have colons, what happens? You have each colon, each colon, each colon. Since you already defined that each colon should be 0 0.3 of the page. So we're going to see this. So we're going to see the, this is the first colon. Started with this. And we already gave it the the, the width. Along with so everything happens between the, this colon and this colon is this this place. So whether it's an alert block or whether it's a, a block or anything, it's going to happen with this this colon. So that, that's what we have here. So what we see we, within this colon. We, we can see an alert block for abstracts. I think another thing is the, the separate column is used to, you know, uh, divide, it, separate the columns, more like create the sections for each column if you check it out. So after each piece of information in each column, yes. a separate column is invoked. Yes. So we created a separate column using this command. So the separate column is not like a default um, lattice command. It is created and this is where it's created. So I'm going to come back mm -hmm. to, to this. So we can see this particular colon. So when you add the particular colon, we are creating a separate colon. So a separate colon is um, is a space in between colons. So it's not a default lattice command. So we have to create the command. And to create the command, 
this is what you do. Anytime you need to create a command, you, you start with slash new command. So when, when you start with slash new command, like you could have something like this. Then the new command is, let me just say, anytime you see Kenny, anytime you see Kenny, this is what I want you to do. So anytime you see Kenny, it's going to do the exact thing. What do I mean? So maybe anytime you see Kenny, uh, this is what I, I want you to do. So let, let's see. So maybe anytime you see Kenny, make make the text bold. For example, let, let let's let's see if it works for us. So I'm going to come to an obvious place. Maybe. Uh, Only color. I think color is more visible rather than bold. Okay. So so okay. Yeah. Sure. So maybe anytime you see can you maybe make it make it give a color text color blue. So let's see what happens. So maybe this let's add, let's add more color. So I'm going to put slash Kenny and see what happens here. Let's see if it works. I think there's an error here. I'm coming. You're no longer sharing your screen. Yes, I'm. I'm going. I'm going to share. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to go, go back here, and I'm, I'm going to fix fix this. I think you left the idea. Uh, yes. So, 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 so I've added it back. So I want to make sure that it works. So I'm not seeing it works. So I'm going to try another thing. Wait, let me try this. Uh, another a brighter color, maybe? Yeah, I'm coming. So I'm going to try this. No, it, it actually worked. It mm -hmm. worked. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, so we can see. So so I created another command, which if you use can there is going to be it's going to be purple. Maybe reference. So we're, we're going to run this again. Yeah. So we can see. So um, you you can you can create your own commands in in LaTeX to to work with that particular document. So um, we created two new commands. The first one is to make your text blue. The second one is make your text purple. So it's with this, with this command that the separate the separator colon was created. So after you separate colon, you write another Hi. colon. You separate the colon. Uh, 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 any question before before we continue? No. Oh, okay. So so the, the reason why we showed you this is to show show you how to create new commands in LaTeX. So maybe so when you got a command is going to be so long and you want to use it often, so you could just create a new command and give it as the 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 original one so so that so without taking much of our time we're going to show you where to get them like your cv templates and then if someone is kind enough to um tell us the information that we can use to make the templates for the for the cv we're going to be glad so um similarly you could you could go to overleaf.com 
and um, when, when you get there, try to create a new project and then choose templates. So new project, for example, then let's come to resume and then CV. So we can see like thousands of templates of for, for, for CV. So you can see um, templates by different people. So it, it, one thing is you can keep scrolling till you see the one that you 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 really like and you want the one you like that you want to use. So we, the basically basically we just editing and then we get the result that we want. Um, say so for example, we're choosing to use this modular templates. And of course, when you preview it, you can see how it looks like. And if you're okay with it, then we'll go ahead to, to make use of it. Now we can see the preview. If it looks fine with us, then let's go ahead and um, use the modular resume. So you can open the templates to so have a copy of it in your in your overleaf um so what while we are waiting so like the the poster we're going to study how uh, everything here looks Okay, so so I, I honestly think that the, this particular template is a little bit complicated, in the sense that like you would have to understand so many things. So um, for for a start, we might not want to really focus our energy on this. So we're going to use another template. Then then after we use that template, then I will come back to this. There's a reason for for that. I think this one is simple enough. This one should be straight. This, this one should be straightforward. Yes, so so I think this one is straightforward enough. So um this template is by someone i think from india and you, you have everything here so the other thing is we just have to edit this to suit us so this is latex code that generated this so i am there you can see the vertical space used very actively here yeah so sure that everything is compact so, yeah, so so the first thing that we're going to use is um I mean, maybe we should make your CV together, if that's okay by you. <laughs> All right. Okay, so so you give us the information. So, so now the, this person is kind enough to make like a comment to show us like each component. So this is the editing. So the first thing is like, you can see the name. So we just need to edit this name to what, uh, what we want. So stay your email address ayo.oladoshu at gmail.com okay thank you so much for that so um just make sure that once you once you change this email address then yeah that is that so you can see that the email address is effective here yeah? then this portfolio is like a personal website if you don't have the portfolio, if you don't have a GitHub address, you, you can just delete it. Everything here, yes. Before the person. So uh, what I want us to understand is, you can see this, this name, this name, and this email address. They are on the same line. 
So you, you, that, that to, to, to make you understand it, so this is, what, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to make this bigger so we can see the name and email. So this is very similar to like making a table. So you can see tabula, tabula here. So oh. you have the name, then you have the upper sand. That means you have a table with two colons. Then you have email. Then you have the phone number. Then you have the phone number. Now, what this means is like, since we're having an empty space before the person, that means somewhere here is going to be empty because we deleted the, the we deleted the information for the personal website. So you will see if I compile this. So we're going to see that this portfolio disappears, but we're we still going to have this here. Yes, the portfolio disappears. We are still having this So if you want to move maybe this GitHub to this line for this mobile number, all to do is copy this, 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 this of this particular. I think your line. screen is free. Then we will compound. Uh, yeah, yes. What about now? And yeah, it's still freezing. Okay, it has changed now. Even now. Okay, okay. Yeah. So so um we 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 made basic edits to the adding. So for the mobile number, maybe you don't want you don't have to give us your mobile number. I'm just going to put like a default one. Um, the next thing is education. So you can see like this person created this particular template using education. So maybe I made it to Lignand. So you can see that here is the name of the school. So this person has taken their time to class to have the um, to so have the, the CV rendered like this. So the only thing we need to do is to edit, edit and make it work for us. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to LinkedIn University. So the location is Hong Kong. So I immediately had the master's in Social policy. Master's. Okay. Thank you so much. Eighteen, nineteen, or when? Nineteen, mm, twenty, basically. <laughs> okay. Anyway, nineteen, nineteen, don't, don't worry. nineteen to twenty. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So, so, so we should just leave it like this. So if we, we compile this, let's see what happens. So we can see this and this. So maybe it took some very important courses that you want to let us know. Maybe business management, for example. I'm, I'm just giving an example, right? I guess. <laughs> so, 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 yes, so you, you have this there. So we, we were able to edit the EDA and the education section. So we'll go down, maybe for this case somewhere. I, I, I think this is for a person who, who codes. But, but now for IMD, IMD speaks like lang actual languages, not programming languages. So let's say IMD speaks to you. Uh, an ego. And let's say I am then no. So I'm going to delete this this framework, this particular line for framework. I'm going to delete everything there. 
to put different things there. So what you can see is we can, everything here is very zoom sub item. So this person already created the commands. So I'm just going to compile again so we know how it works. See, so working with the resume is working with the template makes your life easier. So say particular tools that I I am they uses, maybe I am they uses um Excel, <laughs> PowerPoint, yeah, Latex. <laughs> so, Latex. So, so Latex has like a particular um name. So you so in a, in a, if you're making a Latex um file, so you can just put slash Latex. So it writes, writes in a very pretty format anyway. So say your platform you are familiar with maybe web, uh, Windows, and maybe yeah yeah maybe that's. So you, you put it there. So we're going to recompile and let's see what happens. Here we can see. So yes, we, 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 gradually we are making our CV. So let's come to experience. So you can see the experience here. So basically you can just keep editing. So say for example, um, they worked in Lignant as a research assistant. So how did you know? Um, it's enough. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at guessing anyway. <laughs> Say it's part time. I don't know. So and maybe the role, the role is such assistant. So we just keep editing. So we get everything we want. Uh, maybe I'm going to recompile so that we can see what happens. So we can see we, we, we made the edits. So next thing is here is like like a list of the 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 the, the achievements I I mean I made as a research assistant. So I'm just going to explain the format. So this is like a sub subtitle, and this is the content. Maybe uh, top students. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. Sorry, I think I think it's my it's my network that is just misbehaving. Yeah, are you with me? Yes. Yes. So so yes, so I still edit this. So if you got students, of course you can um, change everything here. Then any other thing you did. Uh, Research collaboration. Yes, so everything you need to do, you only need to do it, just, just keep making the edits. So if at the end of the day you, you, you just did these two items, so you can just do this. Or, extra item, this resume item, and that's it. Hmm. Yeah, so 
you 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 can keep using the, this to to uh, make your CV. So one thing is maybe you observe that this research collaboration and this data camp they are too close, so you can increase the, the, the distance. So one thing is you 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 observe that the this person actually make them close by using this minus five points. So you can reduce yeah. the minus five points like maybe minus two, and then we're going to recompile. Now we have more space. The network is so good. So then you only just click in the edit, make the edits, and then yes, we are done. Now what? It's our default itemize. Okay, yeah, yeah, they yeah, use um, they use them um, description, but you can use itemize. Anything, anything that anything that works. So I'm going to use them um, itemize and let's see if it's work. <clears throat> okay, yeah, yes, I, I use that in my, so it's just the same format as as um, that they were familiar with. So anytime you see a particular template, just walk through the templates and then um, yeah, after you see the template, you, you walk through it and you make your edits. So basically that's it. And then you're good to go. So I think I um, would not want to stretch things longer than this. If you have any questions, you can let us know and then we, we look at it together. So, so, so do you have any, any question? Not really. I think I would have to go hands-on on it and then hopefully I could just share with you once in a while if I have any challenge. Yes, yes, and and yes, it, it, it's actually the best way to go go with things because at the end of the day, what really matters is that you 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 are trying to use it. So if you use it for your work often, you get more professional with it, and and that's it. so. Um, you should practice everything that you have learned so far, and then try to use LaTeX for your articles. It might be a little bit stressful at first, but once you get the order of it. You you see that it, it makes things faster for you. It makes your life far more easier. Trust me. So um, overall, from last last class and this class, any any questions that anyone wants us to address? I think it's just how you need it. I think I'm the only person here. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. For the document, you have addressed my initial concerns. I probably will just go back and try it again. And then um, okay. I'll try to play around this one. If I have any question, please, you guys should permit me. I might just chat to your post now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's totally fine. Like, we, we are more happy to answer your questions. So, our, uh, like, you, you can you can chat us up anytime to ask questions, and we'll be happy to answer you. Thank you very, very much for your time. You're You're right. hours yeah. on, three hours yeah. on Saturday is not easy. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> But it's, it's all good. It, it's really okay, nice yeah. to share knowledge. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we've come to the end of today's class. So we should have Please don't forget to share this on the um this video on the NSS. Sure, sure. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do yes. that. Sure. So, so so I think before the end of tomorrow, it's going to be there. All right, all right. Uh, all right. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You're very yeah, welcome. and you thank too. You. Yeah, bye. Yeah, so I think we should stop the recording. Yeah. Okay. I've done that now.